needs to be said. And who knows, most likely what you have on mind may be something that somebody else has on mind as well. So if you bring your point to me and say, hey, this is what I'd like to hear you discuss and I can share with that, then many people could receive from it. So that's what I'm asking you to do this time around. OK, so you can start that right away. You can start today. You can start right now. You can send me a message on Messenger and you can go directly to my page to do that. Um, if you just, you know, you know how to get to my page, right? You just click on that little picture or click on my name and then you can go right to my page. If you don't have it, it's Al Wilson Jr. It may even show up Al J.R. Wilson, depending on, I don't know exactly how it works, but somebody can show you. All right. Now, let me get back to the topic. Do you take time out for you and do you take time out for your household? Very important because most people are so driven on trying to get money. Yeah, I'm going to go right straight with it. Most people are so driven on trying to get money that many times they forget that there are other aspects of life that they need to include. Then for people who it's not about money, there are many people who are just trying to be so kind or in other words, don't really know how to say no to other people that they find themselves doing all kinds of things and they don't take time out for themselves lastly there are a huge group of people who just really honestly feel that they have to be doing something they just got to be doing something they don't really know how to take a break they don't know really how to chill they really don't know how to just you know calm down and be still uh and, and and i'm not saying there's anything wrong there's all different types of personalities that make up the world so your personality might just be who you are but the question remains are you still taking time for you are you still taking time for your household Maybe it's not necessarily a family. Maybe you're single. Maybe you don't have anybody in your household except you. Then your household deserves some love. You deserve some love. You deserve some you time. Okay? And you say, well, I live by myself, so that's plenty of me time. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about specific, strategic, set-aside time to where you can do something that you enjoy doing or do something that fills you up. Okay? If, if I can talk about it in this way, and I know this is like, almost sounding like 1980s type stuff. If your fuel tank, your personal fuel tank is empty, what does it take to fill it back up? Okay. Man, that was so 1980 something. <laughs> but you get the point. What are you doing? Do you have anything that you can point to to say, you know what, when I do this or when I do that, I get fulfilled by it. I get filled back up. Whenever I'm depleted or whatever, whatever that feeling is inside of me that feels like, oh, my goodness, days are just passing so fast. I can hardly keep up. By the time I open my eyes, uh, I'm ready to close them again because I've gone through the day and it seems like I've missed everything. Those things happen, especially when you find yourself what we call getting into a rut. One day seems like the next. The next day seems like the next day. And everything is happening so fast. It seems like you're you're losing time, like months have passed and you can't even remember what you did the last few months because everything has just been happening so fast. You wake up, you go to work all day, you come home, you have maybe a couple hours, you go to sleep, you wake up, you do it again. And that happens all the time. You have to have a separation. You have to have a step back to say, wait a minute, let me see what fills me up and what can rejuvenate me because it's, it's different things for different people. OK, that's the biggest point. It's different things for different people. Some people, they may be completely fulfilled by just curling up and staying in the bed for, you know, an hour or two hours or three hours extra on a weekend. And that might rejuvenate them and give them all the energy they need. Some people say, you know what? No, I got to go get near some water. Uh, I got to I got maybe if I'm in, at near on a boat or I got to go down by the river walk and I got to just I just want to be around some water. And that fills them up. Other people say, hey, when I can get around some friends and we can laugh and we can 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 just talk and, and, and act crazy and silly and goofy, that fills me up. My question to you is what fills you up? Are you taking time to at least even find out? And I'm going to give you a little bit more on that in just a second. What I want to do first is I want to see who's joining us this morning so far. And uh, I, I'm so excited to, to say that in this particular season, like I mentioned, we're going to have a lot more interaction. And I can't wait. 
I can't wait to hear what topics you want to discuss or have me talk about, or maybe we can even interact. I believe that's going to be something that we're going to be able to do this time around. So I see my sister on. Hey, Kimmy, my dear sister, Kimberly Beavers. I love you. And I also see my other sister, Elisa Scott. Lisa Cabisa, what's going on, girl? You good. I'm good. We all good. God loves you. God loves me. <laughs> and and uh, so let me see what we're saying here. My sister says she does not take enough time for herself at all. And you know what? I agree with that. Why? Because I know her. You know, I, I've pretty much been knowing her my, well, I have been, well, she's been knowing me my whole life. <laughs> I'm not going to tell your age. Don't worry. But think about this. Oftentimes we think that what we're doing or what we're uh, going after is the biggest issue for our, for our day. Okay, so if you're going to work because you got to make money, because you got to pay your bills, then you feel like that's what I'm doing. I really don't have time to think about the pleasure, or I don't have time to think about what, what I would like to do. I've got to do what's needed. I'm telling you that there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance because believe, the money will not satisfy you. The money will not sustain you. The money, even paying the bills, will not satisfy you. It will not sustain you. It may keep a roof over your head. It may keep the heat on. It may keep the lights on. It may uh, keep you with something to, to, to shove in, in your mouth. But when I'm talking about sustaining you and fulfilling you, there's more to life. Well, let me see. How did Jesus say it? Jesus said it this way. He says there's, and, and I'm paraphrasing, he says there's more to life than food. There's more to life than raiment or clothing. He says, why are you so worried about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear? Why are you so worried about how you're going to be sheltered? Then he says this. He says, the birds, they don't have to worry about any of that. He said, and they don't even work. They don't even punch a nine to five clock, he says. Paraphrasing for you Bible scholars, don't shoot me. He says, they don't even do that. So, so the point is, is that even though we go after these things and we call them necessities and we call them essentials to life, you've still got to have something that you can recess to and get refilled. It's just like at the end of the day, when you take your cell phone, and you plug it into the wall to be recharged, the, the charge that it received only lasted a certain amount of time. And if it was utilized, then it was, it was the, 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 the time of the battery decreased even further. You're the same way, except, you, you know, I hope you don't plug your leg into a socket or anything like that. Don't, don't try that. Don't try that at home either. Okay, now, but there has to be something that you can do to recharge. And what is that thing? I would like to hear from you today on what that is, because I think it's something worth discussing. Is it something that maybe somebody else could take a look at and consider and say, you know what, that sounds like a good idea. Many times you find out by process of elimination what fulfills you, what satisfies you, what encourages you, what re-energizes you. You may find it out by process of elimination. So if you don't really know right now what you like to do per se, don't feel bad. There's a lot of people that don't know, but maybe some ideas from different people may give you and you, you might, you might catch a hint. You might say, you know what? Let me try that. Let me see if that works for me. If it doesn't work for you, don't get upset. There's many different things you can try, but the goal is to get you to the point of understanding that you need to have a refiller, a re-energizer, a, a, a backup source, okay? So I see Sister Sarah Ray watching. Hey, Sarah, so glad to see you and that you're getting better. I know you're feeling better. Keep feeling better. Don't worry, it won't be long. You'll, you'll be back as good as new, all right? And I see my wife on. Hey, love. Love you, girl. Shoo. And I'm sure then if my wife is watching, then my little bean is standing there. Hi, Nala. She is so sweet, y'all just turned four she's learned how to spell her name and she's going to her big person school now she is she is doing the doggone thing you hear me all right so so I, I love you both so lisa says that your 
recess, and I'm going to call it another word in just a moment, so I don't want y'all to freak out. That's why I'm trying to paint this picture and drop this background on you before I call it the word I'm going to call it. But your recess or your re-energizer is music. Give me a little bit more information on that, Lisa. What do you mean when you say music? Is it opera? Is it... Um, pan music <laughs> you know or is it the pan flute is it is it drums i mean what what kind of music do you like to listen to and what does it do for you go ahead and put that in the comment section too you don't have to you know tell everybody all your business but maybe if you could just tell how it re-energizes you maybe somebody else could catch the point of what i'm trying to say now with that being said, this is what I really want to actually call the word that I'm talking about, okay? And some of you are going to say, eh, I don't know about that, but just, just you know, follow along. See see if maybe that's what you think. Does anybody else have something? Oh, my wife said, hey. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from the rest of y'all, too. What is it that re-energizes you? What is it that you feel like you could uh, just separate yourself from, from everything else and do specifically for you? or with your household that just fills you up, that gives you that energy, that gives you that strength to say, you know what, I can keep going. Just like the cell phone that has to be plugged into the wall to get recharged, what is it that does that for you? Now, here's the word. You ready? Hold on to your seat or whatever's close to you. I'm going to say this. Sabbath. Sabbath. Somebody say Sabbath. Okay, say that a little bit louder because I don't really think you said it. I think you're just looking at the screen. You're expecting other people to say it, but you didn't say it yourself. No, I want to hear you say it, and you need to hear you say it out of your own mouth. Say Sabbath. All right, there we go. That was a little better. We're going to work on it, but I'll take that for now. Why are you talking about Sabbath? Everything that I just shared with you is what Sabbath is about. Now, somebody's going to get real extra, extra spiritual. Somebody's going to get real extra, extra technical and say, no, Al, Sabbath is this and Sabbath is that. Let's take a look at what Jesus said. He said, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. What was the Sabbath intended to be from the get go? Why was the Sabbath even important? Where, where do we even trace the origin of the Sabbath to? We trace it all the way back. We trace it all the way back. We trace it all the way back to the beginning of what we understand as time, what we understand as the earth. OK, here we are. Well, actually, we were not here yet. In the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth. The earth is without form and void. Darkness is upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord is moving over the waters. You know it. Sing it if you know it. And then he starts creating. He starts making the greater light and lesser light. He starts making the stars. He starts making the firmament. He starts making the thises and the thats, and he starts making the 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 uh, fish in the sea. He starts making the birds in the air. He starts making the beast of the field. He starts making the creepies and the crawlies. He makes man. Now, he looks at everything and he says, you know what, this is pretty nice. And then guess what? He takes a rest. It says he rested. He rested. Now, we don't really see much of this until we come to another point in history where the children of Israel have been redeemed, bought back, have been set free, delivered from the slavery of the Egyptians. They are taken out of the land of Egypt. They are taken into a wilderness, another place, so they can learn to worship. That's a whole other topic I wish I had time to get into. Oh, my goodness. Wilderness is all about learning how to worship. I am not going to preach, I promise you. Here's what happens. He institutes for them by law, a time for them to rest, a time for them to rest. He says what? You are going to work for six days. He says now you're going to work for six days and then the seventh day you are no, you're, you're not going to do any work. And he has to lay out for them what that means and what that looks like because they are so used to working. They are what we would call underpaid, okay, where they are working full time, over full time, double, triple duty full time, and they're not being paid for it. So they are born into this 
life of servitude. They are born into this life of slavery. They are born into working. That don't even sound right, does it? I mean, the first few years of your life, you're supposed to have fun, like my daughter, like like uh, Apostle uh, Ade's uh, son and daughter. They they are born into having this wonderful time of, you know, I'm, I'm learning how to be me, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. I'm learning about characters and comics. I'm learning about ABCs, and I'm learning about numbers, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to walk and play with shoelaces and all this kind of stuff. That's what they're learning because we... We are in this age now where we can enjoy those types of things. But in that time, when the children of Israel were in slavery, they were born into working, which means all they knew was work. All they knew was work. OK, I'm using this as a, as a backdrop to try to help you see your life from a different angle. Now, all they knew was work, 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 work. From the time they were born now. When you take a, a nation of people like that and you immediately transition them out of that in one night, just because you took them away from the place of slavery does not mean the mentality of slavery was gone. Oh, boy. They had to be delivered from the thought of who they were. <laughs> I wish I had time to get into this like I really want to. Now, listen. So what God does is, as he's creating this new nation of people, and he's giving them whole new laws, he's giving them a whole new lifestyle on how to live, he institutes, implements, forces them to take some time to rest. And he says, this is going to be your Sabbath day. You're going to work for six days. On the seventh day, you're not going to do any work. He says, gather what you need each day. He says, don't get too much and don't get too little. He says, because if you do, if you try to get too much, by the next morning, it's going to turn into worms. It's going to just go away because I want you to trust me every single day. Give us this day, our day. Trust me every single day for what you need. So he says, get enough just for today. I'm, I'm coming back to the point in just a moment. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't, don't leave me. Don't leave me. He says, then he says, on the sixth day, he says, gather twice as much is going to last you the sixth day and the seventh day. He says, but I don't want you to do anything on the seventh day. Now, why was he so adamant about getting them to not work for that one day? What did he want them to do in that one day? In this day, it was supposed to be a time of doing nothing. That don't sound right. Okay, you're right. It's not. He wants them to rest. Resting and doing nothing is two different things. Let me get a little deeper into it. Resting involves rejuvenation. Resting involves Getting your energy back together, getting your faculties back together, getting your mind right, having an opportunity to do, uh oh, check this out, what God did when he rested. What did he do? It says he looked over everything that he had made. So what did he do? He reflected. It's a time of reflection. The Sabbath is a time of reflection. He looks over everything he made, he said, it is good. And then, he, he, he just chills. He chills. So he's reflecting and he's relaxing. Is it because he was tired? No, no. God, God does not get tired. <laughs> when it says he rested, he stopped from all that he was doing. The reason why it's important for you and the reason why it's still important, believe it or not, to rest from what you're doing during the week is because you need time to reflect. You need time to uh, regenerate or re-energize. And you need time to just have fun, to just to just unwind, to just be. Uh, uh, ladies call it just letting your hair down. You know, I, it's not going to work too well for me, but but I get the point. I understand what the, what they're trying to say. You get me. So that's what I'm talking about. Let me go back and see what some of you have written down. So Lisa said music. Kim said music as well. Uh, I want to read Lisa's. First, it says, I love listening to smooth jazz, gospel worship. Uh, it causes me to go into a space and place which puts a smile on my face. See, that's what I'm talking about. You got to have something that puts a smile on your face. And your 
whatever it is, whatever whatever your stimuli is. Okay, that's that's too uh, technical, Al. Give me a better word. Whatever your motivation is. That's what it is for you. It doesn't have to be everybody else's and you never have to compare it to anybody else's. Whatever you like to do, whatever helps you to get to that place where you can relax, relate, release for all of you uh, 80s and 90s babies. <laughs> you know where I'm coming from with that. Relax, relate, release. Relax, relate, release. That is what your Sabbath can be for you. OK, now let me see what Kim said. Kim said music as well. I have a different playlist worship jazz contemporary big band it's okay like i said it doesn't have to necessarily be what anybody else's is so my wife she said crafting or binge watching tv or movies well i can definitely say i know she does that <laughs> but crafting to me i think relaxation is literally do nothing i mean like i could literally sit in a chair no light on no tv no phone, no nothing, and just sit there and really, really enjoy that time. That's that's me. Oftentimes, I have a tendency to think that because my wife loves to be doing something, I think that she's not resting. But I can't base resting on what I like to do. Resting does not necessarily mean that you are in the bed sleep. It means that you might just need some time to do whatever you like to do. Hey, uh, Sonequa, Mo God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Always sharp, always crisp, always clean. Psh, psh, pow, pop, pop. God bless you. Love you so much. And then I also see uh, my dear sister, Tracel Moore, Tracy. The uh, now, now, oh my goodness, if I start talking about this woman here and how much she's meant to us just recently with my daughter, she has taught our daughter daily. She has been the the, the, the sole teacher uh, for our daughter as of the last couple years. And she has taught her so much uh, from a Montessori perspective that is, we, we, and then on top of that, she bakes amazing. She, she has an incredible popcorn business. Oh my goodness. I mean, the, the, she's just amazing. Y'all need to check out her page. Go to, you see Tracy Moore right there. Click on her page and check out some of the things she does. She is amazing, y'all. I love y'all. God bless you so much. Um, and then my sister says, I can reflect on things that make me laugh or memories of being with friends when I hear certain songs. So the songs then, from what Kim is saying, those songs act as a trigger and it allows her to remember or go back to, that's what the word literally means, to go back to, go back to a time that is another memory related event and hopefully it's an always an exciting memory or a happy memory let me get back to my point everybody needs a sabbath in their life you need a sabbath in your life well doesn't that mean that we go to church on you know a particular day of the week and some people say it's saturday some people say it's sunday what is a sabbath is a saturday or is a sunday are we supposed to do anything on the sabbath we're not supposed to do anything on the sabbath and <sighs> I'm not trying to get you into legalism. What I'm trying to help you understand is the point of the Sabbath. What was the point of the Sabbath? This is what Jesus talked about. He said, is the Sabbath a particular day of the week or is it a particular understanding? He said Sabbath was not made uh, or the man was not made for the Sabbath. In other words, God did not institute the Sabbath for you to be slave to it. He instituted the Sabbath to help you be able to reflect, relate Calm down, pause, take a break. Here's another word that a lot of people kind of get a little leery with, meditate. No, it's not a cult word. Meditate means to consider, to go back, to reflect, to, to, to go over and over and over. So when I think about, you know, that's the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, that's a form of meditation. That's me going back over and over and over in my mind, the wonderful works of God, because what does it do? It rejuvenates me. It replenishes my faith. It, it strengthens me all over again. And it doesn't have to be a particular day of the week. It has to be a time, not necessarily even a, a specific time. It has to be something that you can regress to. 
Okay, retreat to. And that doesn't mean you're retreating in defeat. What it means is, no, I'm backing away from what I was uh, uh, on the forefront line of trying to, to push. This campaign that I'm pushing every day of the week, this campaign of going to work, this campaign of getting the money, this campaign of, of you know, get money, get money, get money, pay the bills, pay the bills, pay the bills. You got to relax from that for just a moment. Give yourself a time to heal. You know, many times the reason why we don't get healing, even in our physical body, is because we'll never take time to be still. We never take time to be still. Do you realize, and I'm going to say it again, you have to plug your phone into a wall and let it sit still and let it charge. Even if you're still using it, it has to have a time to be stationary so that it can charge, recharge. Your phone has that. Do you not think that your physical body needs that as well? Do you think you can just go on and on and on and on and on? Do you think your mind can go on and on and on and on and on just continually, repeatedly? Do you? Do you really think that? Okay. Hey, Kalita Blair, I love you. God bless you. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me say it right. Kalita Blair Dixon. I don't mean any disrespect. She was Kalita Blair in high school. <laughs> All right. She's complete Kalita Blair Dixon now. God bless you. And I love you. Thank you so much for watching. I won't go into the whole backstory. You know the backstory. Everybody knows the backstory. I'm sure I told it before about how we were both voted class friendliest. Okay, yeah, I didn't really enjoy that too much then, but I get the point of why that happened now. It was all a part of what God was doing in my life. How about that? So, let me get back to my point. You need a Sabbath. I need a Sabbath. We all need a Sabbath. And whatever that Sabbath is, is something that's going to help you to reflect on what God has done in your life. It should, anyway, help you to give time to reflect on what God has done in your life. That's going to strengthen you. It gives your body a time to rest and to heal. Do you know that your body is so fearfully and wonderfully made that it can repair itself on, on many different levels? Not on every level. Okay, we let's get it. You know, let's get it right. We can't be a starfish and, and you know, just shoot out another arm like a starfish does because we're a little bit more complex than that. But the point being that there's many things inside of us that can heal if we would give our bodies proper time to rest. We get so caught up in this day and age, this, this, this fourth industrial revolution that we're in, that we're constantly going. We cannot get a break, and our body is suffering for it. Not only our body, our spirit suffering for it. Not only our spirit, our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, suffering for it. Most times, our emotions take the brunt of the abuse. Because you haven't taken time to rest. Why is rest so important? God made it important. He even told them that the, the, the rest that they were taking, God told the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, he said, the rest that you're taking is not just for you. You need to let the land rest. Mm, 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 mm. Why do you need to let the land rest? Because the land needs time after you uh, crop the land or you harvest the land and you take up the crops or the elements from the land, you need to give the land some time to, to re-energize, to get those minerals and those nutrients rebuilt. You need to give it some time to let the rain fall and let it mix with the earth and let it do its thing to get it back to the point of being able to give something again. Many times we are eating sick vegetables and then we get sick and we wonder why, because we're not giving the earth time to rest. We keep farming the land over and over and over and over again, and we don't give it time to rest. Do you know? OK, OK, yeah, I got it. Do you know what the, the issue with the Babylonian exile was? Those 70 years for Jeremiah that he talked about where the children of Israel had to go to Babylon for 70 years. Do you know why? Do you know why that happened? Why was it 70 years? Because he told them every seventh year. <laughs> oh, you get it now. Every seventh year you were supposed to do what? Let the land rest. So you were supposed to farm the land for six years. And on the seventh year, you were to do no farming on the land. It was going to produce a bumper crop in the sixth year that was going to be enough to cover the sixth and the seventh year. Doesn't that sound just like what he told them with the manna? Pick up enough for today. 
And then on the sixth day, get enough for the sixth day and the seventh day. It won't go bad. It won't spoil. It won't go rotten. That's the same thing he said for the years. He said, you must let the land rest every seventh year. So why were they gone to Babylon for 70 years? And then God told the prophet to tell them, you're going to get to come back after the 70 years. He says, so go ahead, get relaxed, get comfortable. He says, you, you might as well. You might as well enjoy your time because you're not coming back until 70 years is over. Why? Because they failed to let the land rest. So they had to. After the number of years that they had been farming the land without letting it, they had to be off the land because the land needed its 70 years to rest. Huh. A year for each 10 years that it did not get allowed to rest averaged up to 70 years or added up to 70 years. I'll say it that way because the, the land just needs time. Your body is made from the earth. It needs time. Your soul is comprised of spirit and earth. Boom, together. God breathes into man the breath of life. Man becomes a living soul. Your soul is partly carnal or fleshly. You see? So you, your, your mind needs time. Your emotions need time to rest. Your desires need time to rest. Your will to do things needs time to rest. Some of you have joined on and you haven't had a chance to really say what it is that you like to do to rest. What is it that you like to, to, to get away from everybody with and what do you like to just do just for you? What's something that you do just for you? Some people might say, well, you know what, like I like to just, you know, take a bath for about two or three hours, maybe have some candles around or something like that. I don't want you to get too intimate or too personal because this is, you know. PG. But what is it that you like to do? If you haven't answered already, some of us have already put our information in the comments, but tell me, what is it that you like to do? What is it? Is it, is it going to, to take a nice drive? Maybe, maybe you like to take a nice drive or, or maybe you like to go bike riding or go jogging. Maybe you like to go down by the water or, or, or maybe you like to go see a show or maybe like my wife said, you like to binge watch, you know, some TV, just, just kind of zone out and go into a whole nother, you know, kind of quasi reality or something like that. For me, I used to enjoy not on a, a large scale. She can tell you that, you know, I never played video games a whole lot, but every now and then it was just kind of nice after coming from a hard day's work for months and months and months on end every now and then it, I just love to get into a nice, uh, good game on my, uh, PlayStation three, because it was like being in a whole different world, you know? And, and, uh, it, it, I, I kind of got locked into that and I could go explore here and explore there and be in a different place. And it was kind of like getting away from this type, type of reality without losing consciousness. So that was something that was kind of fun for a little while. I don't get to do that very often at all, but the point is everybody needs a Sabbath. You need a Sabbath. You need a Sabbath. The most important part of it, and this is what I want to get to. How much time do I have here? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Hey, author Janine May, wonderful author. Brothers and sisters, I highly encourage you to go check out her page. Check out her book. Um, I, <laughs> you know what? We might have to set something up so you can come and talk about your book uh, uh, so, so that people can know what you're doing. But please, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. But everybody, please check out her page as well. Janine May, author. Janine May, she's an author, a wonderful author. Okay, now, getting back to it. Um, Tracy says this, a walk on Belle Isle. A walk, hey, you know what? I got to tell you, I love going to Belle Isle too. Every now and then when I was driving for Lyft, I would just take a few minutes and I would just drive around Belle Isle because I was downtown anyway and I was up and down Jefferson uh, or I'd be close to Wilbur and I would just go over to Belle Isle and I would just take a little drive around Belle Isle real slow. You know, I'm talking about real slow where the point, you, you know how it is when, when you don't even put your foot on the gas. You just kind of let the car just float around Belle Isle, so to speak. It's so lovely. And, and it, it's, it's amazing because when you look back at Detroit from Belle Isle, especially downtown Detroit, it looks so different. It looks so, you actually be like, man, that's a beautiful city. And then you cross the bridge, you get back over there. And you're like, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love Detroit. <laughs> Don't 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 shoot me. But you need that. And, 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 and that's a way to get away from everything. That's your Sabbath. You see, that's your Sabbath. Now, here's the main thing. And I mentioned it briefly, but I want to go back because I really want to touch on this. I want to make sure that everybody 
is um oh wait my battery is is going out so uh if i don't see all of your comments please don't uh feel like i'm trying to overlook that my battery might be going dead on my phone but lisa also says she loves walking um and um Kim says she needs a starfish anointing. <laughs> right, just you know, pop out another arm for me, please. Pop out a, a, another mind for me, please, because this mind just about burnt up. And uh, yeah, no, but I get it. But this this is the point that I want to make about the Sabbath. That I think it was the, one of the most important parts of what God instituted for the children of Israel. Not just to say, okay, you can't do any work. This was the most important part. It was a time for them to reflect and to remember. Oftentimes we don't like to remember certain things because maybe it was a bad thought or it was a bad experience that happened. It was something that was unpleasant or unkind, but it's still necessary to go back and to remember those things because you have to remember that the page turned as well. What are you saying, Al? I don't get it. Let me see if I can. can. Okay, so God re removes them. From the clutches of Egypt, right? The children of Israel. He removes them from the clutches of Israel. Think about it. Then he says, don't work. Just take a day and rest and relax. Well, that if, he, if he's telling you not to, to rest, not to do any kind of work, don't pick up anything. Just what are you going to do? What are you going to do, you think? You're going to contemplate. You're going to think. You're going to meditate. And most likely... It's going to be on what he says, think about, which is, and he always says to them, he always repeats to them over and over, I am the God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. I am the God that restored you. I am the God that did this. I am the God. I am your God. I am the one who brought you out. Every time he talks to them just about, he says, I'm the one who brought you out of Egypt. Is it because he's trying to brag on himself? No, because he's trying to get them to reflect and consider the fact that, yes, you were a slave in Egypt. That's the part of the memory or the part of the, re, the, the recalling that maybe I don't want to think about. I might not want to think about that part because it was so bad. And it was so hideous and it was so. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah, but you need to think about that part. And then you also need to connect that to the next part, which is I delivered you, which means I delivered you. And now you are not a slave anymore. And you need to think about that over and over again, how God did what he did for you. You need to remember it. You need to consider it over and over and over. So at the end of your week or the beginning of your week or whenever, whenever your Sabbath is, you need to take that moment and think about, man, this was a tough week. I really got tired of so and so such and such doing whatever they did or saying what they got on my. But 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 after you do all of that, thinking about that. Think about the fact that another day came. Here it is. It's a brand new day now. What do we know about brand new days? What do we know about new mornings? Who his mercy. There you go. You got it. You feel me? His mercy. God's mercy is new every single morning, every single morning. So there's a new mercy waiting on you. Boom. 1201. There it is. New mercy. Hey, how, how you doing, Mercy? Yeah, it's a brand new mercy, which means that whatever happened in yesterday, just the fact that you are in today means that you got past it. That ought to be some shouting music right there. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, you got past it. Here's another day. You live to talk about it. So you need to remember and be reminded that God did it again. He delivered you again. He set you free again. He brought you out again. He restored you again. He did it. He gave you another breath. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yesterday was hard. Yeah, two days ago, yeah, it was hard. Yeah, two weeks ago was hard. But take your time. Take your moment. Take your Sabbath. Do what it is you like to do, whether it's listening to music, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's doing arts and crafts, maybe it's binging on some TV. Whatever it is, you just relax for a moment and you think about how great God is and that he delivered you again. See that moment right there. What were you thinking about? That moment. That that's a. Mo it doesn't have to be twenty four hours per se. It doesn't necessarily have to be 
you know, uh, uh, you, 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 you go away and live in a cave or you have to take a tent out into the wilderness unless that's what you just like to do, you know. As long as what you're doing is not harming or affecting anybody else, that's what you need. Are you taking time out for yourself? And then secondly, the second thing is, which I want to take about just a few minutes to talk about, because I think you're getting what I'm saying. Hey, Nina, Nina Payne, God bless you. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you in like forever, but 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 still right here. Still right here. So good to see you on. Thank you so much for watching. And Patrice. Hey, what's going on, Patrice? The twin. OK, I'm going to leave you alone. But but you're my girl. You know that. Uh, the second thing is. Do you take time out for your household? Do you take time out for your household? I, I, I sent a post out on Facebook. I think it was about a week ago, I guess. I think it was a week ago. I don't know. Like That's why I said time moves so fast. But I was studying. It was, yeah, it, matter of fact, it was a week ago because it was Saturday night. And I was studying for Sunday morning for the message on Sunday. I was studying, and I was trying to pull my notes together and I was trying to get my brain together and I'm trying to, you know, compile all the information that I want to share for the Sunday message. And and uh you know, that's usually on Saturday evening just kind of, you know, getting a chance to get my mind right for Sunday. Does it always work? I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it's, you know, but you you, you got you got to try, right? So I'm getting my notes together and I come downstairs just for a minute to check on something and my daughter is playing with this tea set that she received from mommy mommy got her this nice little cute little uh tea set and it, it looks just like real it feels just like uh, a real tea set like porcelain you know and so she's so excited about it and she's opening it up and she looks at it and so i'm getting ready to slip back upstairs so that i can go back and finish up my study for the day and she says in her beautiful nala Charlize Elizabeth Wilson, what we call the bean, because she's so tiny. Uh, she says, and this is how she says it, y'all. Tell me what you would have done. This is how she says it. She says, Daddy, may you play with me on my new tea set? Well, I can tell you I was worth about 25 cents right at that moment. <laughs> because here I am hustling and bustling and moving and trying to get upstairs and get my notes together so I can go in Sunday morning and and preach and teach and 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 she said will you will you will you play with me and I'm telling you it was it, everything that I was doing up to that moment was absolutely meaningless do I mean that in the sense of I didn't care what God wanted me to do the next day no I definitely cared but it what she wanted took absolute precedence at that moment. And I said, absolutely, baby. And I sat down right there. I didn't say, hold on a minute. I sat down right there and I said, come on, let's let's have a tea party. And she had the graham crackers and she had her teacups and she had the biscuits. Well, the biscuits, of course, you know, that's the the the, the little shortbreads that they eat with the tea. Uh, we sat down and and uh, we we went over what to do and how to talk and all that kind of stuff and, and she loves watching Peppa Pig so we had to you know do it all in an English accent and so I asked her you know you, now you have to ask me baby um, how many lumps do you want and and so then I said oh about three or four now for those of you who understand Looney Tunes you exactly get what I'm talking about but we, we had tea and crumpets or tea and biscuits, uh, however you want to say it. And we had a wonderful little time and mommy was there and we just had a good time as a family. That was also a Sabbath for me. Do you understand what I'm saying now when I say Sabbath? That was also a time to let go of everything, dedicate some time to my daughter, to my wife, and let us be a family family or a household because again maybe you're single you're saying I don't have you know somebody in my house to to do that with then you take time for you and you appreciate you maybe take some time and just sit around and appreciate the things that you have we say maybe I don't have much look at each and everything that you have and and be thankful for it in your heart even if it's just to say Lord thank you for that chair right there yeah I got it from you know the the, the thrift store but Thank you for that chair right there. Thank you. Thank you for 
that light stand right there, the table that it's sitting on. Make Thank you for that milk crate that I got my books in. Thank you for whatever it is. Take some time and thank God just because that is rejuvenation for your mind, for your spirit. It's a reminder to you, no, you didn't get all this on your own. It's a reminder to you, no, you're not alone in everything that you're trying to do. No, you're being provided for. Just like those birds who don't toil or spin, don't punch a nine to five clock. He says, and your heavenly father makes sure they have everything they need all day long. He says, look at the lilies of the field. He said, they don't work. They don't do anything. He says, but they are clothed better than the richest man who ever lived, Solomon. He says, you need to think about those kind of things. And you do too, because you've got it a whole lot better than you think you do. It's the only reason that you're able to complain at all is because you have it so good. Let that sink in for a moment. You have it so good that you can complain about what you don't have. Shanada, hey, sister, God bless you. It's so good to see you. I can't wait for you to be on the show so we can learn how to get our credit together. Woo! Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to get it together. But that's what I'm talking about. You have got to take a Sabbath. He didn't just say that to be saying it. In fact, it's the one commandment <laughs> that he said, remember. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. And that's the very one we forget. All right, I got thou shalt not kill. I ain't killed nobody. Thou shalt not steal. I don't steal nothing. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I don't lie on nobody. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's household, wife, vehicle, whatever. I, I, got, I got all of that. But then he says, remember the Sabbath. Remember to take some time to step back away from everything and reflect, replenish, rejuvenate. Get filled up again. We don't do it. We don't do it. That's why we're sick. That's why we're hurting. That's why we're upset. That's why we're depressed. That's why we're stressed because we forget. Even, even if it was just taking some time just to go back through a journal and look at all the things that God has done for us, all the situations that we found ourselves in that we could not or we thought we would not get out of, and then here we are, we're out of it. If you just read over that repeatedly, week to week, maybe month to month, you would remember far more easier. I believe with everything in me. Okay, calm down. I believe with everything in me that one of the biggest problems we as believers have is that we forget to remember. I could preach about that for the rest of my life alone. And I still think that it would fall probably on half deaf ears. And I've still think that many people would still fail to do it but somebody's got to be there to remind us you gotta remember just don't forget to remember god did it god did it he did that 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 and if i think about it regularly enough it won't be so difficult to believe that he can do this and this and this and this and this thank you so much prophet blame for watching i love you so much sir god bless you and your wonderful wife Apostle Ade, I love you to, to the moon and back, and, and you know that. That's what we need, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Think about starting it this week. Think about what's going to be my Sabbath. What's going to be the time where I take a moment and reflect on what God has done. I'm going to give my body a chance to rest. Maybe you might even need to give your car a chance to rest. Okay, I don't have a car. Give your feet a chance to rest. Uh-oh, give your stomach a chance to rest. Woo! Matrix. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Give yourself a chance to rest. You need it. You need it. V8, yeah, you need time to rest. It's the truth. It's the truth. If you feel me, if anybody out there feels me, just say, I feel you, Al. Just put it in the comment section. I feel you, Al. You are right. Yes, I need a chance to rest. Go ahead. Throw it down there. Because I, I know you do. I know you do. I know we do. I know we do. Listen, don't worry about whether it happens on Saturday or Sunday. No. 
It's in your heart. It's in your life. Make it a lifestyle. Make it a moment. If, if, listen, if you work midnights, I am not going to expect you to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to pray. That's not your schedule. So then you have to make your schedule what it is and set your own Sabbath for yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just say that you'll... I appreciate I feel... Okay, I get... Brother Aaron, I love you, man. Take some time for yourself. Take some time for your household. If you have a family or a spouse, take some time for your family or your spouse because all of that needs a Sabbath as well. It needs a rest. It needs a moment. You need to be able to look back over some things and, and say, it is good, just like God did after he created yeah, that's good. That's nice. That's nice. You might find some things in your time of reflecting that you don't consider to be so nice. But you know what? The more you do it, the more you take time to regularly to look over, to survey your land as a king uh oh, as a queen. Come on now. Then you will find more things to say it is good about. And, with the, and when you do that. When you do that, it'll replenish your faith. I promise you, it'll replenish your hope. It'll replenish your trust. This is a big one. It'll replenish your expectation, your expectation, your capacity to receive, your capacity to expect will increase. And when your capacity to expect increases, now you have more to be able to feel. All right. I guess I'm done just about. Uh, I got to get out of here. Thank you. I feel you. I feel you. Absolutely. That's what we need. So I love you so much. God bless you. Listen, for those of you who are out there and you have a book in your heart, something that you have been kind of saying, you know what? I think I need to write a book about this. Contact Prophet Blaine Irving. Contact Worship Radio International. Contact worshipradio.faith. That's the website, worshipradio.faith. Contact them. Talk to Linda Hunt, the uh, executive sales director, and, and talk to them about getting your book published. It's a lot easier than you may think it is. You're going to be hearing about mine very soon. Listen, you've got something in your heart. Give a call. Maybe you say, you know what? I need a platform where I can come on and talk about some things that are important to me. God's given me a subject or a topic or an idea to share, and I want to share with the masses. Come here. Come here. Come. Go to worshipradio.faith. Make it happen. Tell them Al sent you, all right? For the rest of you, I hope you got something out of today. I hope you will at least be reminded that you need to take time for yourself. Take a Sabbath for yourself. Take a Sabbath for yourself. It's absolutely important. Don't get into legalities. Take some time to re rest, re re relax, relate, and release. Relax, relate, and release. Take some time to do it every day, every week, as a family, as a household, as an individual, as a single person, as a married couple, whatever. It, after you take time for yourself individually, take time for yourself married couple, take time for yourself family, take time for yourself household. Sometimes the church congregation needs to take a Sabbath. Mm. Take a take a Sabbath in your business. Take this. So, listen, let the Lord talk to you about how to, to work all that out. But I, I hope I planted a seed today that would stay in your mind and stay in your heart and bless you because we all need it. We all need it. OK, so that's it for me. I got to go. I hear that siren out there saying it's one o'clock. So that's it for me. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath whenever you do it. I love you.